Titties, baby. Ow, dumb out. Season 3, Ron Murray, they say you have to go get some of the G-O-A-T's and with me, I have the ignorant military, man, go ahead and introduce yourself. Titties, baby, you already know what it is, it's Pimpin, Molly G's, man, we in here like swimwear, tell them hoes get their fishing gear or fucking drown, titties, baby, you know what it is, man. Man, big shout out to Molly G's, thank you to Pavement Season 3, people wanted to see you, thank you for your time today, man. You already know, man, you already know. Let's get right to it. Fall Rockaway Queens to Texas. How'd that happen? Let's talk about it. Oh man, look, my my, my mom's best friend, man. She uh she decided, you know, she wanted to join the military. Got stationed in San Antonio. Did eight years in the mill. Got out the mill. Did eight years back in New York. And um, she moved out here. After five years of living in Texas, my mom decided to come visit her for the first time for two weeks. At the end of her two-week vacation, she called my pop, said, look, I found a job, an apartment in the car, packed the, packed the shit, send the kids, we moving to Texas. We was all like, word, we was here, baby. How old were you when you moved to Texas? Like 12 and a half, about to be 13. So was it a culture shock coming from New York to Texas? Hell yeah, it was a fuck culture shock. I got into so many fucking <laughs> fights, man. Niggas was saying the word fool. Like, that's how they talk to each other. Like, what's up, fool? I was like, nigga, your mom's a fool. Nigga, now we scrapping. Nigga said, nigga used the word fixing one time, yo. He was literally building a go-kart. And, and I was like, hey man, what you doing? And he was like, I'm finna uh finna build this uh I'm finna build and I'm I'm so grammatical in New York. I'm like fixing to build, like building and fixing. Like what are you doing, bro? Like you're not making sense. He was like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? I was like, bro, you can't fix and build. Like either you're gonna build some shit or fix some shit. What are you doing? Yeah. He we got into a fight. A bunch of shit, man. I, niggas was trying to fight me just because I was from New York. Like, I ain't even talking. Fuck with niggas. Yeah. Yeah, I was getting out there. So before you came out here, were you already rapping in New York? How'd that come about? Um, my, 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 my father was a big time DJ in the 80s, man. Um, if you go on his Facebook, he got pictures on the scene in New Jack City with Ice T, oh, like loud. literally on the set. He got pictures. He, he introduced me to Steve Harvey, Sage the Entertainer. I met Biggie Smalls when I was a little kid. Uh, he got pictures with Aaliyah, Ray J, Brandy. But he was on the scene at all times in New York, man. He was going to death. He would go, when a, when an artist would drop a new record, he would literally go to Def Jam. Uh, oh, so he was working records. Yeah, he was going to all the, all the record labels and he would get the records so he could spin them at parties and stuff. It was pretty cool. In his apartment and my grandma Brownstone in Bushwick in Brooklyn, he got a whole room dedicated to thousands of records. Mm. Yeah. So how'd you get into rap? What were some of your early influences? Man, bro, um, I'm not gonna lie, man. My, my mom's was super, super duper like inclined when it came to music, man. She was listening to, to all the greats, you know? She was listening to MC Light, Queen Latifah. She was listening to a bunch of shit from the from the 80s and the 90s, man, from the 70s, Al Green, Luther, my pops, he was a big LL Cool J fan, and a lot of motherfuckers don't even understand at one point, LL Cool J was the Lil Wayne of the game. He was the Drake of the game, you know what I'm saying? He was the hardest rapper out, you know what? My pops was listening to Heavy D, but just growing up in New York, the radio station was playing all that. Well, you know, they, they ended up being in Wu-Tang, but Busta Rhymes, Nas, Jay Z, uh, the 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 list goes on, bro. Like you know, out of all the rappers, but my my most influenced rappers, where I fucking tuned in to music alone, was, and this is my top three to this day, okay. and they they influenced me for everything that I've done. But first and foremost is Big Pun. Big Pun uh, uh, ly lyrically showed me how to lyrically flip multis out of the box. That dead of the little of little Italy, everybody know that, you know. And then DMX, 
was so different. It was weird how he talked. It was weird how he rapped, how he delivered, how he went up and down in octaves with, with, with the deep voice and his ad libs was crazy, man. And then third of all, third of all, you know, his pimping, his Cameron, man, Cameron. Deep set. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Cameron. How'd you, so how'd you get into battle rapping? Were you already battle rapping in New York before you came down here or? Nah, I actually, um, you, you know, I would watch niggas battle, but you know, Back in the early 2000s, a battle was, you know, who got the best verse. You know, this person would get get, get his five verses. This person would get their five verses, and they would just rap. They they five hardest, three hardest verses back and forth, and they would have a small crowd of, you know, a small gathering, and them people would judge off crowd participation. But it wasn't as big as it was till Smack started coming out with the cam and going to different hoods across America and throw a battle at the end of the joint. You know. The murder moves, the party yardies, the loaded luxes, you know. It was crazy, but I didn't start battling until I got to Texas, and that's when I actually started. Um, Fort Worth, right? Yeah, I came to Fort Worth. I was in Fort Worth whole time, whole city, whole city, every every area, every hood, from the west, to Las Vegas trails, all the way up in Como, the north, all that halt of city, north side with the essays. Shout out to you know Mortal Soldiers. You feel me? The East Side, shout out Lil Brad, you know what I'm saying? The the, the Stop Six, the Meadow Brooks, the, the Wood Havens, the South Sides, the Berry Hills, the, the whole Fort Worth, bro. I was everywhere. I was all up in neighborhood. I was all through Truman Street, you know what I'm saying? And Stop Six, I was everywhere, bro. Just fucking with different niggas because of the music shit. But, you know, I was just a product of my environment, so the people I hung with, they reminded me of the people I was back home. Granted, that was That's the low. I ask you, okay. Yeah, it was the low income areas. But they, I related to them the most, you know. I went from Far Rockaway, Queens, and when I was seven, I ended up moving to the fucking South Bronx, man. So yeah. life was what it what it was. All right. So with that, what was the DFW battle rap scene at that time? Was was there a scene, or like you said, it's more so music they, at that point? They was doing this shit called scribble jam, some scribble jam shit that I never ever te tested the waters in, but. Um, in, the Kilo, in the DFW, it was Kilo Artifacto, shout out to him, my guy Romeo No E, Bobby Fisher, it was a bunch of people, I, not to, not missing any names on purpose, but it's too many names to name, but um, they would they would meet up and they, they would rap a freestyle off the head with a beat behind them, but that was how they was doing it on like 106 and Park, so everybody figured that that's the, that was the only way to battle rap, you know? Right. And they wouldn't even put on beats that had the tempo to battle rap. They was just putting on any old instrumental, you know. But um, it wasn't really a battle scene, man. I would catch a dude outside a venue. I perform at, uh, I perform, you know, somewhere in, in South Dallas. or And then right after we perform in South Dallas, we'll step outside. And the MC would be like, yo, you you tight. And I was so cocky and arrogant at the time. I'd be like, shit, well, let me, let's, let's rap, spit your best verse. And we out there spitting verse for verse, bar for bar. And you know, we was killing shit. Me and my people was killing shit. It wasn't really, I'm not saying it wasn't nobody rapping as good as us, but not too many people could keep up with the way that we was delivering our shit at the time. You talking 2002, 2003, 04, 05 shit. Yeah. So. How do you get into battle rap and how do you meet Osama? Oh man, bro. So, you know, like I said, everybody was clicked up. Everybody had their own clicks. Everybody rocked with who they rocked with. You know what I'm saying? And that's how they kept it. You know, people ain't really too much intertwining in the mix with, with clicks just because just that's what it was, you know. Um, but you had you had the Immortal Soldiers out here doing their thing. You had Osama the Great. You had Smooth Vega. Um, you had Trap Squad Cartel. Shout out Trap Squad Cartel. Shout out Trap Squad RP, my man Prada Ve, man. That's my brother, man. Real talk. But everybody was doing their own thing, man. Like, honestly, like, so, um, I didn't really too much mix with Osama. You know, Kilo Artifacto even had his own little mix, but that's when King Coleon started fucking with Artifacto. We met him downtown Fort Worth. Flipping CDs at the time. Yes, I said flipping CDs. We were selling <laughs> CDs. Making mad money though. We was making three, four, five hundred dollars a day. Wow. Selling okay. CDs. We was real good entrepreneurs. But um, yeah, man, so after I get out the army, my man Jordan Boyle, you know, he was he was um basically messing with Osama's record label, Hustle Money ENT. And Osama being the guy he was, he was real, he was an asshole, man. He he would never let <laughs> He would never let me perform, bro, and he had no idea how dope I was. But Jordan kept telling him, like, Jordan Boyle kept saying, bro, this is 
the nigga I've been telling you about. He influenced me to start rapping. I wouldn't even be rapping if it wasn't for this nigga. Let this nigga perform. Yeah. And then that nigga finally let me perform one day and was like, holy shit, That's I did not know. Like. He's like, I did not know, bro. Like, what the fuck did that come from? And then, you know, he put me on a couple of his little performance ciphers. Uh, he had, it was called Live from the Block right, the concert block series. Perform, right, the concert series. Yeah. Right. And I was on a couple of those. We performed at club, the old, you know, Club Chrome, couple other venues, Red Goose. And then uh, we started doing a concert series where I performed a couple times. Then he started talking about he wanted to battle rap. I wasn't feeling it at the time because I'm like, bro, like, niggas don't understand what battle rap is out here. That shit wouldn't mm. work. Okay. It's not going to work. Where are you going to do it at? How many people? So are you weren't very optimistic in this. I wasn't. So you had motherfucking Jordan Boyle battle. I forget, bro, name. It was the first live from the block battle, but it was at the end of a concert series. He did it the same way Smack did it. Bunch of performances and then at the very end of the night we got a live rap battle right here. Rap battle. What's going down? You know what I'm saying? Um, and uh, it, everything, everything went the way it went, man. So what made you say, hey, I'm going to go battle rap? Like, what was the point of it? Because you're from New York. You're from the Mecca. You know how the battle rap is that what made you say, hey, all right, Osama, I'm going to come get down with live from the block? Um, honestly, bro, like, and this, this is, like I said, there's a lot of MCs that can rap, bro. I'm not, I'm not even sitting here saying, you know, like, niggas can't rap or I'm, I'm just better than everybody. But when I seen the quality and the caliber of that first battle, TW won. No disrespect to my man. He was brave enough to get up there. But Jordan Boyle got up there and did it the old school way where he just rapped the 316s and his 316s were fucking phenomenal. Yeah. They weren't even meant to battle, but the way that we used to write back then, we were spitting the punchlines, the similes, the metaphors. I could rap any 16 out the arsenal and it could sound like I'm battling you because that's what the fuck we was, that's what I was trained on doing. So everybody I rapped with, we was doing the same shit. So when I seen what the fuck was going on, I was like, ah. I still ain't fucking with it. Yeah. So they had to do a whole nother battle. And then when I seen the second one, Osama was like, what's up, bro? Come on, man, let me get you out there. Jordan keep vouching for you. So I was like, fuck it, I guess I'll step out there. And that's when I did, you know, Molly G's versus Kilo Artifact, though. Okay, Phenomenal Molly battle. Molly G's versus Kilo Artifact, that was your first block That was the first block battle. Okay, most definitely. So with that, how was the Froggy's atmosphere at that time? where the events were being held for the block. I hear it was a lot different than it was now. Yo, Froggy, son, was a fucking war zone, B. Oh, it was a war it zone? It was a war zone. It was a lot of fucking animosity in the building. You could tell, like, like niggas' clicks would be over here, click would be over here, click would be over here. And I just felt like it was a dangerous location, bro, because it was a long ass fence. And I'm like, yo, I'm, I, I'm, I know I'm doing it, but we'll have some girls come in first and the niggas would toss guns over the fence, B. We'll toss guns over the fence and the girls will put that shit in they shit. We'll go in, get patted down, because the dude can't pat the girls down. And then next thing you know, we in there strapped up. Like, I don't give a fuck, bro. Like, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? With cheat just to keep it a brick. So were there crews back then? Cause I hear about like you were part of Riot Squad, right? Was that more like a battle rap crew or a crew outside something else? One second, I'm uh, so sorry. No, nah, it is. Hey, what's up? So talking about Froggies, that atmosphere, you know now there's 500, Ivy League, the dungeon, the dojo. You were part of Riot Squad. How were the squads back then and the crews on the block? Man, the squads, at, the, at one point, bro, like, we wasn't even fucking with each other, like, we would see whose crew is whose crew, but we wouldn't even talk to each other. It was a few crews, man. I can't remember. I know it was 500 Crystal City. Them niggas would be, like, 40 deep. Then the Riot Squad would be with us niggas. Then you had, like, the Ag Town niggas. And then you had the Mexican niggas that was coming with, like, my man Fiasco. And Fiasco Wells, you know what I'm saying? F. Wellington. Um, but it was just... You know, it was like we knew we was battling, but the people that we was with, the crowd we was bringing, they was there literally to have our backs just in case the mm -hmm. other crew was fighting. So you could see and feel the animosity in the building. So like when I come, nigga, I was bringing Bloods, Crips, and fucking uh, racist white biker gang people. How are you How are you bringing racist white biker gang people? Because <laughs> I'm Molly G, man, conversation rule the nation, baby. And as, 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 as long as... uh. As long as you, you know, you know, you, you talk the talk, man. Everybody love Molly, man. It's hard to hate hey, me, man. Shout out, shout out to you, man. One, 
All right, early days of the block. Y'all are promoting the block, but not just that, but battle rap as well. How was that? You know, of course, you already talked about it. Fort Worth, the DFW, battle rap's new to it. How was it promoting the block in the early days? Man, it was hard as fuck, man, because niggas ain't really, re really just... They, they they didn't know what battle rap was. They didn't understand what it was or what was going on. So for me to tell them I got a, a, a battle rap coming up, you know, a lot of my friends at the time was looking at me like, oh, okay, that's that sounds cute. Like, oh, that's cool. You know, the girls. But, you know, I had a real strong fan base. So my the first. music. You had a strong fan base. Fan base music. and music. And then I just got a strong rapport with a bunch of people. So a lot of my friends, they, they, they would come through and fuck with me just off the strength that we, we've been homies for five, ten plus years, some of them, and they was just showing me love, bro, so um, they would just come to support. They'll pay the $10 at the door. They'll stand there all night and watch all the battles. They'll fucking cheer. You know, they'll boo whoever they boo, you know what I'm saying? But um, it was real tough trying to get everybody to just understand what the fuck battle rap was, because a lot of niggas didn't even know what the fuck it was, honestly. All right, so live from the block, urban legend, you and Oso, y'all worked at a certain phone company, correct? Together? Yes, sir. And I Sprint, heard that to, to get subscriptions, you know, when people would try to, you know, get information from one phone to one phone, you know, that's how the YouTube subscribers went up on the block page. Is that true or false, or how did that come about? Yeah, bro, so <laughs> to keep it 100, man, I had niggas just, you know, and I, you know, Osama was like, bro, we need to find a way to get people to subscribe. And at the time, you know, like I said, conversation rule the nation. You let your lady talk to me, she mine, baby. And I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was selling, I was the number one salesman in Dallas. And um, basically what I would do is I would talk to you. And while I'm setting up your phone, uh... While I'm setting up your phone, I would show you uh, my battle rap on the TV screen. I would turn the screen around yeah. and you would watch one of my battles. Yeah. And then from there, you, you know, it was customer service. I would set your phone up, set your Googles up, swap your contacts and your pictures. And right when I set your Gmail up, I go straight to live from the block and hit subscribe on every phone. <laughs> and you talking, I'm selling, I'm selling 70 to 120 phones a day, but yeah. that wasn't nothing, bro. Like. That was that was that was minor shit. You know, it was it was some shit that happened a little later that got us the the thousands and thousands of subscribers. I can say I probably uh, just doing that by itself. I probably pulled in maybe 600 subscribers, 700 maybe. So you know, looking at your resume, it's, it's a great resume. You were from the block at the beginning. Red Trey Royal, one to see, Embassy, Fresh to Death, K9, Boat Nose, Pac Manson, Tension, Kilo. All those guys, and we're gonna get to the tears over tears as well. So, when did you realize that live from the block was really becoming a thing, and like battle rap was here in the metro place? Were y'all the first battle rap league, or nah? You it? had DFW battle rap league. They were the first league. Okay, so DFW was yeah first. in okay. the metro place, but I mean, and not, this ain't no no pun to them. I ain't talking shit to them, but it seemed like they really wasn't taking their shit serious. They was doing their shits in like barber shops and. We was doing our shits at venues, you know what I'm saying? And they eventually started doing it at venues, but we, when we first started, we never did it at a barber shop. We did it at a venue every single time, you know what I'm saying? Whether it was Red Grooves, whether it was Froggies, whether it was Club Chrome, you know, um, it, I, I, I really started taking it serious when we had Disaster. Shout out to my man, you know, Disaster, you feel me? We in here like swimwear, baby. But when my man Disaster came out to, 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 to Dallas Fort Worth, they took him to 97.9, shout out to J. Cruz, R.I.P. G. Spook for fucking with us, man, real talk, you feel me? And these niggas came out here and, and disaster went straight to 97.9, did a whole freestyle on a, a live on the radio, and then they took him to this little uh, studio on, on, on West Fort Worth of Cherry Lane, crazy, I had just got off work, and I'm about to pull up, it's like 150 people there, yo. Uh, and um, with them 150 people, everybody was waiting on disaster. Everybody waiting on disaster. And they like, yo, dude, I make a right on Cherry Lane. I'm a quarter mile away. I was going five miles over the speed limit. Bitch ass, white settlement. Yes, white settlement. PD pulls me over. Say I got warrants and traffic violations in Fort Worth. They smell the weed in the car. They find the doobie. 
and they fucking take me to jail the night before my battle. It was devastating. Who are you supposed to battle? I was supposed to battle Bobby Fisher. Okay, okay. That's crazy. I was supposed to battle Bobby Fisher. Yeah. So, uh, disaster comes through, and I, I got arrested maybe 30, maybe 30 minutes before disaster pulled up, and right before uh, Pac Manson pulled up in the car with disaster, um, these niggas uh, get to the studio and everybody's flipping out. They're like, disaster! So everybody's like, screaming. Panning out. Everybody's freaking out, bro. And uh, right when all the commotion calms down, Pac Manson says, everybody, everybody, I got terrible news. I got very terrible news. Molly G's just went to jail right down the street. Mm. Everybody said, oh, man. And that shit went away uh, instantly. Instantly, like the whole aura of disaster being in the building went away fast as fuck, yo. So a disaster from that moment was like, uh, bro, who the fuck is Marley G? And why the fuck did he kill the crowd? Everybody was supposed to be excited for me, and he just killed the crowd fast as fuck, yo. Yeah. It was crazy as fuck, man. So um, once that happened, man, uh, that's when I realized that Live From The Block was changing. We had about, we clocked in about 400 people in a venue that only, it was like 462 people in a venue that was only supposed to fit 250 on the inside. Man. We was max capacity, fam. And um, it was just a, it was just a beautiful thing. So, Molly G's with the music, strip club legend, yes or no? Hey, as far as the strip club legend shit go, man, I can't even. You know, I went. I, I started. You one of the first people to make it rain in Dallas. Battle rap wise. No, like, cause I remember it was a story that we had. It we we're talking about one of your performances and you know throwing a lot of money in in some of the strip clubs and in one of your performances, I believe it. Yeah. Was, and some of the things you may have trademarked early on that you may not get credit for and things of that nature. Nah, man, I ain't gonna sit here and act like I was the only nigga out here. Just, you know, it was a bunch of trap <laughs> niggas out here throwing mad paper, mad money, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to but I'm gonna keep it a brick, man. Like, um, shout out to my nigga Black Tap. He started My World Records. That's where I met Demon the King. That's where I met Will Strumentals, who used to go by Big Will. That's where I met my man, Ho Sway, who we later on became Hazardous ENT. But, um, you know, I did my first performance at a strip club fucking with Black Tap. And then from there, we was in Deep Ellum doing shows and I was around, I was 13 years old. I'm performing in 21 and up clubs, 25 and up clubs. I'm in Chris Styles in Arlington, which was which is closed Styles, now, you yeah, feel me? Chris Styles, and I was, you know, I'm 14 years old talking to somebody mama, you know, or somebody auntie, you know what I'm saying? I'm 14 going home with them. I ain't had no curfew no more, you know what I'm saying? So I, I was outside. My mom said, I just, if I start failing or if I start fucking up in school, that curfew shit is back in effect. So yeah. I ain't had no curfew since I was 13 because of the music shit, fam. And um, we just we just kept it a thigh while, man. Um, you know, I, I would dibble dabble in strip clubs and show my face, but the music I was making was party music. You know what I'm saying? I was doing the hip hop shit because my niggas was on that hip hop shit, but I was doing a lot of party music. I was doing a lot of... Uh, 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 just shit they wanted to hear in the clubs because I wanted to be heard. I ain't just want to be, you know, all oh, he raps really good. Yeah. And um, I just ended up uh, still making like crunk music, party music, dope music, a lot of lyrics involved. And then I met my man Ace Montana, free my man Ace Montana. But he had a vision, man. He had a vision, and he ain't wanna, he ain't wanna be broke, fam. So he he turned that vision into something crazy, man. Next thing you know. We at the strip club throwing thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars every single day. Every single day. We was at Temptations Cabaret. We was at Ecstasy Cabaret in Dallas. We was at uh, 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 Cabaret East in Arlington. We was known in motherfucking Houston. We was known in Austin, San Antonio. We'll pull up to your strip club and fuck that shit up. So, you know, we pull up. We already got a VIP table. The table ain't even reserved for us with our names on it, but if somebody was sitting there, they'll make them get up because that's our table. We're going to throw more money than y'all. And um, that's where it started at, man. And like, like probably in like maybe 2015, we started acting the ass. 2016, the money was coming in crazy, man. And I just started this whole 
little network of dancers from LA to Miami, man, and shit been real lovely. Trips to Miami, trips to Houston. Shout out Mama Pie, we in Monroe, we in Jackson, Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? Indianapolis, Chicago, New York. And that shit just, it just was what it was, man. Bunch of pretty women everywhere I go, man. For what shit you, show. What would you say the biggest difference is between this era of the block versus the era that you started in? What would you say the differences are? I mean, this era of the block, man, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a huge difference, man. Like, when we first started, every, every, battle, rap, every battle rap event, I thought niggas was gonna lose their lives. I thought it was gonna be a shootout. I thought it was gonna be a fucking brawl with 30 versus 30. I thought it was gonna be real ugly, man. And um, that never really happened, you know? Uh, it was a lot of animosity, you know? Niggas would get in each other's face and shit, but nobody just brawled it out. But um, this era, man, everybody's friends, man. Like, like, which is not a bad thing, you know, if, if, if niggas was going to you know, LA or Atlanta or Chicago to battle or New York to battle, that's cool, you know, I know you, you know me, but when we here on our home turf, it's every man for himself, everybody gets eight. When it was your click, it was your click, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now, people done got cool with each other and formed alliances, and now they got battle rap groups, and I, I that kind of takes away from a lot of shit, because this niggas that informed battle rap groups, and they ain't even battled each other yet. I feel like, before you join my group, you gotta battle me first, bro. Was and Riot after Squad we do our battle, was Riot, Riot Squad was a group um, based off of the late Stack Bundles, man. Stack Bundles grew up in the same projects I grew up in, in Red, in Red Fern Projects in Far Rockaway, Queens, last stop on the A train, man. So I had nothing to do with battle rap. Bro. Nah, okay, nah. Gotcha. Okay, Stack gotcha. Bundles ended up fucking with DJ Clue. Um, Clue was putting most of his money and attention towards uh, Fabulous, so you know, Joe Button, Paul Kane, it was a bunch of people who wasn't getting the notoriety that they should have been getting for fucking with bro. And um, yeah, Stack Bundles ended up being at a club in Harlem and bumping into Jim Jones, and they clicked, man, and he, he ended up joining Bird Gang, but the original Riot Squad, the Rockaway Riot Squad, used to be S5. S5 was called the Starting Five. It was the best five out of Fall Rock. But then they ended up turning it into the Rockaway Riot Squad, which consisted of Stack Bundles, uh, the late Stack Bundles, R.P. My Brother, R.P. My Brother, Chinks Drugs, man, both of them got killed in, killed in, in Queens, man, and, and my nigga Bino, you know what I'm saying, Big Bino, and then we got my brother, Core 2 G's, we got the same mom, different dad. Same mom, different dad, but that's my actual blood brother, Core 2 G's, man, so um, while I was in New York, Stack Bundles, you know, they they, they they was looking at me and they they heard some of the shit me and my dudes was rapping. They knew we wasn't, you know, we was on top of our shit with, with the lyrics, so they asked me to come and start the Riot Squad South, which okay. consisted of, uh, at the time, it was, it, was, it was a lot of us. It was probably like 13 of us, but at the end of the day, it really ended up being me, King Coleon, Jay Champ, and a couple others. Uh, Jordan Boyle was with us for, for a part, period of time. Uh, Killer BZ, who's a uh, producer that goes by Ocean View, was with us for a little bit of time. We had a bunch of artists that withered in and out, but the main three was me, King Coleon, and Jay Champ. And the three of us, the way that we would we would like sharpen our pen is we would all sit in a room in a triangle, and we would turn on the beat, and we would write a quick 16, and we would literally use our 16 on that song and create a hook for it. But we would battle each other. Mm, okay. You know what I'm saying? And that's how, like, whoever got the best verse, Coleon's verses was always the craziest, Jay Chance was always the hardest, and mine's was always the most, like, technical. Mine's was always, like, witty and, you know, casually fly, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, uh, the three of us together, we would do shows and then rap with niggas outside the venue, and that's how we got our mark. And that's how Osama even approached me to battle rap because of the stories from back in the day. Okay, but you're not down with no battle crews, though. You nah, I ain't with no battle crews. I ain't with no battle crews. I don't want to be with no battle crews. I don't want to. I don't even like the battle rap shit because I don't even want to deal with the politics, nigga. Okay, so so with that better talent, the early days of the block or now? Um. I would say the mid, the mid days of the block was the best talent. Okay, talk about it. One of the craziest battles, which I'm pretty sure have been brought up before, uh, uh, was uh, Chronic, I mean not Chronic, but uh, Maximilian and John Wayne. You had Nike and, 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 and uh, the African, I forgot, LA, Nike, Nike and LA. Craziest fucking battles on the planet. You had King Coleon versus, versus Skits Coleon. 
craziest battles. You had Crazy George versus um, damn, I am Rich. M. Rich versus Crazy George. Yeah. That was one of the craziest battles. We had Poison Pen coming through. We had Aspect One coming through. Disaster was coming through. But like the beginning days, niggas was kind of like dipping our feet in the water. You know what I'm saying? We didn't. We I ain't even gonna say even myself. I, we didn't too much understand battle rap for what it was, but then after we started understanding it for what it was, we started shopping in our pen. We was coming harder and harder and harder and harder. But I can say that midsection where battle rap started getting popular, uh, before niggas started reaching and doing all the antics and gimmicks and being super tough guys on the internet where it was yeah. just rap, that middle era was probably the hardest era just rapping wise from the block. It was tough when you first came in. A lot of these white guys would have never even stepped foot in Froggies. It was it was it was a war zone in there, bro. You could feel the intensi like the intensity of just death. Like yeah. if one person makes the wrong move or make the wrong look, it's over. Yeah. But now today it's more of a friend friend, friend and family environment. You could bring your children. <laughs> so who what's your block Mount Rushmore? My block round Mount Rushmore? Yeah. Uh I ain't even gonna be biased, bro. Like, I, I don't, I ain't never gave a fuck about the views. But when you in that building, bro, and you see me battle rapping, I'm the most entertaining shit that you'll ever see in your fucking life. Facts, and we're gonna get to that. My yeah. shit is movies, yeah. bro. But I gotta put me up there. Um, I gotta put Trebo up there. Trebo. You know what I'm saying? I gotta put King Corleone up there. Um, and for a fourth person, bro, I, I can't even, I can't even call that fourth person, bro. Uh. I mean, Pat Manson put in a lot of work. Uh, Red, they put in a lot of work. Ryu. I can't even put Ryu up there. He did about three or four battles and disappeared off the scene, bro. His 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 uh, Stone Mountain, he was up there like at the beginning. Yeah. He was up there, but I mean, I would have to say skits, bro. Honestly, okay. honestly, just, just based off of the, the, the level of work. So what would you say some of your favorite battles are? Cause like you said, I, I say you're probably the most entertaining battler you know you definitely put on a movie when you step on the stage you know from it's dad batman bruce wayne show enough what were some of your favorite performances that that you put together um one of my favorite performances uh i ain't gonna lie bro putting together uh when i battled michael white i was deaf Okay. That shit was fun because I actually I wrote most of that battle on the way to Corpus Christi. I ain't even had a battle written. Um, I wrote most of it on the way to Corpus Christi. That battle was fun as fuck. Um, the Pac Manson battle was probably the best shit I ever done in my that life. That was actually my first block event. Damn, I ain't yeah. even know, that man. That was my first block event, yeah. Uh, and that, was that battle as intense as it seemed on stage? Um. Yeah, it was very intense. Okay. It was a lot of people in the building. It was a lot of people just watching what the fuck was going on. It was crazy as shit, bro. It was, it was devastatingly crazy. It was fucking nuts, bro. It was people in the crowd. Everybody that was in, in attendance for that battle said that they felt like they was, um, like, like, B B roll in a the movie. Mm. They said like they was, they felt like they was in an actual movie. Like they was yeah. standby cast, like extras. So another battle, I think after that I saw you versus Embassy. Yeah. This goes to my bar breakdown. Okay. Remember live from the block, this is my goddamn house. You better watch your goddamn mouth. Because this ain't no daycare, but we'll see if they care when I smack your ass upside the head with that hammer for jumping on my goddamn couch. Versus Trey Royal. Trey Royal. Yeah. Molly G's. Dad. Dad, how many people have you fathered, brought into the block? Because I hear some people say they brought in this person, they brought in that person. I even heard oh, some people man. say how you've helped them write. So, Dad, how many children do you have on the block? Dog, they all my children. <laughs> His dad. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, basically, man, um, I, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a debunk that one. I never helped anybody write. They say you've helped them. No one said you I, I did, right. yeah. Helped. I did help them structure their shit. I did yes. help them perform better. Like, there's a mistake that a lot of people make where they forget that they're supposed to be rapping to the camera. The crowd is non existent. That's one of the advice I give people. Like, this crowd that's behind us, they're not really here. 
But the people in, in the camera, YouTube, that's who you're supposed to be talking to. Look at that fucking camera. Don't worry about the crowd behind you. The mic is behind you. When you turn around, you take away your audio. We don't want to see the back of your head. We want to see your face. Exactly. I'm gonna, I want to watch this on YouTube later. So look at that camera. Um, say your verse better. Take better breaths. Why you got so many words right here? That line is filler. What the fuck is that line? Take that line out. You got all these lines to get to the punch, mm. but you don't even need all these lines, bro. You wasting a bunch of time rapping. You only got a minute and 30. Take out all these rhymes and just punch, punch, yeah. punch. Every four bars should be a haymaker. You didn't rap 10, 12 bars. There ain't no haymakers, bro. You just rapping. Anybody can rap. If you want to rap, fam, go. Go do a, a, a showcase somewhere, bro. This is a fucking battle, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you ain't got the balls to to elevate yourself and realize that I'm I'm not telling you that you're whack, but I'm saying this shit right here is whack. I did that shit. My man G.I. Joe, his G. first G. battle, he came out like, dude, I think this shit is dope. I was like, nigga, that shit's the worst shit in the fucking planet. <laughs> That's the worst shit I ever heard anybody rap. Four battles later, he came up to me and was like, dog. I, I improve, you right. That shit was ass. Yeah. My pen was lazy. But I was just making sure that, you know, I didn't want niggas to embarrass themselves, bro, because you got fans and people coming to see you, and I got people coming and paying to see you. And if you're not, like, coming through, which I'm not going to sit here and talk shit, because I ain't going to lie, bro, I, I never really gave a fuck about this battle rap shit. I was doing it for fun, and I would write every single battle the day before the battle. Oh wow, so that was your, so that's Every battle you've ever seen me rap, I wrote that shit 24, maybe 48 hours before. Did so like Pac Manson showed enough, even like all that the day before. Wow. The day before, Trey Royal, I was writing that shit that morning of. The, when I battled Tension, I wrote that whole battle at 3 a.m. that morning. Yeah. It was wow. a one rounder, six, seven minutes of rapping. I wrote that at 3 a.m. in the morning, bro. It was fucking crazy. Okay, so check this out, tears. What, Tears Over Tears, Cortez's Battle League. Were you the first person from the block to hit the road? I was the first, not not the road. It was other niggas like Fellow went to Shout out Fella. KOTD to do some shit with they shit in, in LA. And you had niggas go to Houston. You know, Trebo went to Houston and shit. Um, you had um, uh, Pablo Squints and, and John Wayne and Al Jesus. And I forgot who else was there. They all went to Florida. So it was niggas doing shit in other leagues. I, I could say Robin Rhymes was the first person to make it to that she level. Robin Rhymes. You know what I'm saying? She was the first person to make it to that level. And then after that, I was the next person to make it to that level. And then I could say, you know, after me, it was like Crazy George. And then, um, I mean, trebo has been consistently doing it. You know, Lowe went to Washington to do it. And if I've left out any names, it's not because I'm not saying fuck you. It's because I don't feel like thinking that much. I smoke weed and I'm an alcoholic, respectfully. All right, you made a cameo in Jalen's battle. That was going to be another bar breakdown. But the Molly G's op list. Who needs to see Molly G's? Because you've you definitely made some cameos in battles. You, you said, <laughs> shut up. You know, I, who's on your op list? So look, man, I'm going to keep it one thou while. I've only battled one person that I wanted to battle. Osama the Great. That Who nigga, was that person? Michael White. Okay, okay. <laughs> Osama the Great is like Dana White when it comes to this battle rap shit. He figures out who the fuck you are. He figures out, um, he basically tries to match the opponent with the opponent and be like, all right, this is your rap caliber. This is your rap caliber. Y'all both do this. And he tries to make y'all fit in weight category as far as bar ability and performance. And that's what he does. And he does a, he does a pretty good job at doing it, but I haven't battled anybody that I wanted to battle. I wanted to battle Shyster and Rich. I would call them niggas out all the time. I would tell them to their face, bro, you got to see me. I would tell them, but it never happened, and now they kind of don't even want to battle no more. It was just a lot of procrastination. But for the niggas that think, that think I'm picking on niggas, like I ain't picked nobody. Osama would pick them, and them dumbass niggas would agree. <laughs> Not my bad, you feel me? But, um... Yeah, Jalen, pussy. He got to see me. Uh, 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 fake Sinatra. He got to see me. Uh, I would love to battle Pablo Squints. Ooh. Uh, Kato the Felon's been talking shit. Oh, let's go. <laughs> uh, let's go. It's a bunch of people, bro. There's nobody that's obsolete. I will battle every. I've told everybody on the, on the group page. I will battle anybody that wants to fucking battle me. But do you really want to fucking have to guess what character I'm gonna come to the stage as? 
Do you really want to sit there and think that much? Do you really want me to manipulate your life and make fucking promo videos to fuck with you at 3 in the morning? Do you really want that shit? Nobody wants that shit, bro. And it's like people don't request to battle me for little shit like that. That's not, that has nothing to do with me, but everybody on the block that I haven't battled, you're a fucking op and you're a pussy. <laughs> Alright, last one before we get out of here. How proud are you to see where the block has, you know, came to at this point? You know, you literally helped build the foundation to see where it is at now. How proud are you? I mean, to keep it a thou while, bro, um, I was excited and then it kind of went down. And like I said, bro, uh, your business is your baby. Your baby is your business. You run your business like it's your baby. I can't do anything. It's Osama's business. Me, Trayvo, Wood Grain, we tried to help as much as we could to build the brand and make it something better than what it is. But we could only do so much because it's Osama's baby. Um, I had so many great ideas that would have put us way ahead of everybody. Um, I told Osama, let's do a two-on-two. -two. He was like, bro, why the fuck would I do a two-on-two -two when most niggas can't even get through one round? I was like, bro, we should do a whole round of two-on-twos. Let's do it. About three, four months after that, URL starts announcing that they doing two-on-twos. It's crazy. So I said, fuck it. I became the bad apple. I became the Batman, the vigilante. He also wanted to kick Embassy off the block. I said, nope, Embassy's gonna be the best rapper on the block. He's the best. I trolled niggas for days, and until this day, till this day, nobody has had a bigger reaction than Embassy coming from behind a crowd, from the middle of a crowd. 20 minutes of a video, you don't see this guy out of nowhere. He comes from behind my fucking shoulder, says, how did I defeat, how should I defeat these niggas? Crowd goes crazy. Embassy had the best reaction on the block. And then, just like, Osama, I love you, nigga, but you was doing a lot of shit. Nigga, to, to also just trump the shit that he was saying about not doing two-on-twos, me and Embassy did the first fucking two-on-two, -two, which inspired Nike and Shice, which inspired Coleon and Smoke, which inspired every everybody that came back and did a two-on-two -two after that, they came to me and said, bro, after I seen you and Embassy, I had to. I am the most inspirational nigga on the block. I bought in Red, I bought in Pac Manson. I, I inspired Trebo to, to do, to, to, he attended his first battle rap and wasn't impressed till I rap. Trebo is one of the most prestigious battle rappers in the state of Texas right now. OG Percy, his motherfucking one of his sons said, Dad, you should battle rap. He showed him some New York shit. He said, Son, how the fuck am I get to New York? That nigga said, Dad, they do it here in Texas. He showed him live from the block. OG Percy said, Bro, before I started battle rapping on live from the block, I kept telling my son, I want to meet the dude with the glasses. I want to meet the dude, they do right there. I got to meet him. OG for Percy, first battle versus the beast. I'm, I'm standing right there. Had him ready. Robin Rhymes, her first three, four battle raps. She sat in my living room and rehearsed every fucking line. I said, no, nigga, you got to say it better. I was like Mr. Miyagi. Motherfucking Kushites was the dojo. And that's what everybody will tell you. Kushites, you would come in Kushites and you would stand on that stage and you would rehearse your shit and I would not let nobody in unless you allowed them to. I would let you rent that for free. And you would rehearse your shit over and over and over. It didn't matter if it was early in the day or two, three in the morning. It didn't, I didn't give a fuck. If you wanted to rehearse your shit, let's do this shit. I'll open up that fucking door and I would let niggas spar each other in Kushites. I would let niggas go over their shit in Kushites, but Kushites came to an end. And when Kushites came to an end, Bryce Fellow allowed, opened his doors and allowed his living room to be the new dojo. And that's where all the battle rappers would meet up at. And we would rehearse our bars. But it's a bunch of niggas, fam. I don't give nobody no lines. So don't sit here and say that I'm helping niggas. But even my nigga Sean Gata, who's one of the greatest battle rappers Shout out in the. Sean Gata. My nigga, you feel me? Even he calls my line all the time like, hey, bro, hey, fam, uh, what you think about this line before every fucking battle? He calls up Lex. Hey, bro, what, what's up? What's up? Uh, he could before he go battle at Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor shit in New York. Yeah. Sean gotta hit my line before Trebo went to the Crucible and he was battling Nun Nun and and everybody. Trebo would call my line and spit his shit to me. Bryce Fellow would call my line, spit his shit to me. King Coleon called my line, spit his shit to me. Pablo Squints called my line. What you think about this one line? One line, and I'd be like, bro, I get that line. A four. They'd be like, a four, really? I'm like, bro, because listen to the line before that. That's just like a nine. 
and you see, like, the next line is fucking trash, bro. Come on, fam. You you, you know it's a four. And they be like, yeah, it's a four. And then, you nigga, I was sharper than niggas' pens, bro. I'm not saying I'm the best in the world at what I do. I'm not the best. I don't even acquire to be the best. I let niggas say I'm the best. I've let the fans put me in their top five. I've never argued with anybody. If, if, if a nigga believe I'm great, Thank you for watching my shit, bro. I respect you. I love you. God bless you. But when it comes to that shit, fam, it's, it is what it is, man. Like, I, I just, I, I just watch. All right. These lights bright as shit, too. Oh, you the man. You the man. Oh, respectfully. Oh, you the man, baby. All right. Three, two, one. You said you wanted a history lesson. Go to the OGs. You got it. Molly G's, thank you so much. Live from the block, season three, the pavement. Get us out of here, Molly G's. Hey, man. Make sure y'all go on motherfucking uh, Instagram and, and type in M-A-L-L-I-E-G-S. You're going to see me with my shirt over with the Batman signal because I am fucking Batman. I'm motherfucking Bruce Wayne's lanes need to stay in their lane. I'm flying in a paper plane, flying in a helicopter propeller cooler than a polar bear toenail, you know. So uh, make sure you get on Instagram. And follow uh, P I M P T V R L M uh, Party in My Pants TV. Make sure you go on Pornhub and type in Party in My Pants TV. That's the TV show. We travel in the world where I interview people from the motherfucking sex industry because that's where my focus is at right now. I still attend battle raps. I still go to battle raps, and you might see me do a cameo in a nigga's battle every once in a while. But am I an active battler? No. Will I still battle a nigga? Yes. Have I told niggas that I'm a battle them? Hey Sinatra, you are a fact. Have I told K the felon that I'ma fuck him up? Sure I did. Have I told K uh, Jalen that I'ma do him worse than skits like times ten? Of course I said that. Did I still call out Enrich and Shice? Every time I see them. Niggas stop acting like I'm running from battles. If this shit don't make sense to me, I'm not gonna sit there and waste my motherfucking time. Suck my fucking cock. Oh, and I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Pussy. Yeah. Hey, what's good, baby? We live direct in effect. I'm in here with my man Ron Murray. Yes, this sir. is the pavement season three. Yes. This is Intergalactic Pippin. Yeah, 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 yeah. They call me Dr. Sylvester, the world's greatest host tester. You ever see me on the Bob Parker show? The price is right, the beverage is show for three days and three motherfucking nights. Yeah, I'm that motherfucker they warned you about, right? Cause I got more game than Van Hanny got poker bean and more flavor than motherfucking now later. Baskin Robin had 31 flavors. I had way more than them. Chach. And you can take that to the motherfucking bank. Feather in my fedora, baddie uh -huh. in the passenger, getting hair from somebody daughter. Player in the game, poor sports mad, cause how I caught her. The judge bang, like a gavel, order in the court, sir. Bow! Y'all still fuck with them fuck for free hoes. I'm wearing thousand dollar tuxedos. I got a baddie from Puerto Rico. Half a bottle of Clico, and she gon' give you a freak show. Tired of getting beat, then you should fuck with me. I spit my cheek, now she choosing to fuck with a beat. You gotta pay to touch on them cheeks. I got your woman crushing the luxury sweet, busting nuts for a fee. Gladly, you'll pay the price to get the kitty. I'm with the baddies, taking flights to different cities. Check me, the mommy sexy on yachts and jet skis. The block respects me. I'm always in the view of some beautiful women. Most of them knew this. You know I ain't new to this pimping. It's music to my ears when they recruit for the business. Got them choosing niggas mad because they losing their bitches. Over there, you have to ask for permission. Fuck with me, bag a trick, and you can get commission. Look into my eyes. And you can see the vision The difference between them and intergalactic pimping This isn't from a different dimension All is, listen, pay attention Wisdom, the bread you get I'll invest the percentage and the interest Will turn your business into a business That's the mission, easy If you're with it, Jeezy, let's get it Believe in this pimping These niggas tripping Find a hoe and homer Give her all your dough And that's why we call you a simp, son Jeez